Go ahead and pray with you guys. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna try it again, sorry. <laughs> I'm liking that's nice and round. All right. I mean, I can remember hearing that upright bass, doom, 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 in the background because it just traveled through, and then you could hear the banjo clicking through like the the oaks. They told me you better get your life in control. You better make it, boy. You better set yourself. In high school, um, someone gave me a Sam Pacetti CD, and I, I vaguely knew that he played in St. Augustine, but I listened to it a lot. My first night, I stumbled upon a Sam Pacetti gig at the Milltop, and I just, I remember calling my brother and be like, I saw Sam Pacetti tonight. I saw him at the Milltop Tavern and just bragging about it. It really meant a lot to me and like, I really hold that moment close to me because it was my, it was like my induction to this, t this town and this wonderful place that we're all a part of. Back in the day, in the 50s and 60s, uh, St. Augustine was just as rich of a bohemian paradise as it still is now. And for whatever reason, it's always had this incredibly high caliber of musician for a very small place. You know, the ratio of, of incredibly gifted musicians that are there and have always been there is, uh, has, is astounding to me. Our scene is so cultural. You know, there's so much, not just music, but art in general. And it's, um, it really feeds that vibe for sure. This, this town is like a, a haven for really gifted, really talented uh, singers, songwriters, uh, poets, and they find, they find sanctuary here, and they find support, and they find like-minded people. They find people that are cut from the same piece of fabric. Very good. I just will say that St. Augustine is like, it's uh, the home base of home bases. So when I got out of the Navy in, uh, in December 1966, I was curious to see if I could maybe make a living out of, you know, writing songs and telling lives. And so uh, headed uh, headed south, 
stopped in all these little places along the East Coast coming down. It was winter time. I'd never been to Florida. And aimlessly found myself in St. Augustine. In fact, I actually ran out of money in St. Augustine. <laughs> first night uh, sleeping on the beach and I heard that there was a bar in town where I might be able to uh, find some work. So I cleaned myself up the next night and uh, went in and right there at the foot of Charlotte Street there was the Trade Winds uh, Lounge, a place right out of uh, an Ernest Hemingway novel, especially in those days. But I'll talk about those days. <laughs> Can you tell me where have they gone? Can you tell me why they're not here? For thousands of years, they lived in harmony with this land. Can you tell me where have they gone? That was a fun time because a lot of people were just coming to town. Bob Patterson uh, had just come on the scene and, and Gamble was here pretty much full time. Uh, so we, we got to see a lot of Gamble in, in that era. And uh, Charlie Robertson, of course, and Jim Quine and, and Dale Benton, they had a duo. I was working with a band and, a, and it was a banjo player named Dale Benton. He uh, was a great banjo player and he was also in archaeology, in the archaeology, archaeology program at uh, FSU. And he told me, he said, you know, my major professor says I have to go over to field school in St. Augustine. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, I'll go over there and we'll play over there. And so he got me a job doing archaeology, digging. And we would dig in the daytime. And then at night, we got a job at the mill top just the two of us playing, you know, bluegrass. But, so that's, you, but the person that ran the project was a player, Kathleen Deegan. Kathy Deegan? Yes, was, the doc. Was, was that, she was the major professor yeah. uh, of, Mandolin player player. of Dale Penn's. At the end of each dig, we would have a, a prom, and everybody would wear prom clothes. But every year, about midnight, they would all march in their prom clothes to the Milltop, where Don was Dunaway was playing, and he would sing a song he wrote, the ballad of the archaeologist that had to do with a mother who was really, really sad. Her seventh son was born with the shape of a theodolite on his thigh, and of course, everybody loved that. When I discovered the Milltop, and I did that through Jim Essery was was playing in town and he kept telling me, Donnie, you need to go up there and check that place out. And I did and never left. And I've seen some of the greatest guitar players on the planet in there, from Sam Pacetti to Martin Simpson, who I named one of my, my youngest son after. Every kind of music you can imagine. Trade winds, back to the white line, 
back to the mill town. All night, everybody was, you'd pass people on the street. Everybody was going the same route. You know, and there was good music at every one of the places, you know, but those were really the, you know, the three bars. So I've been at the Traylands for 22 years. This, this place has a great history. It's been open since 1946. It's the oldest lounge in town. Um, Campbell Rogers played here. Jimmy Buffett played here. And um, you should pan over to the Wall of Fame for you. Oh, there's me. I'm 25 on the wall. But um, those are a lot of the different performers that have been here over the years. Backing up to the days when I, that first night that I, I went into the trade winds, tropical saloon, I'll tell you how extraordinary it was. Uh, Jimmy Blue, Paul Champion were playing on stage. They introduced me to the bar owners. Uh, I, I did, I guess that I don't even remember if anybody even listened, you know. But after it was over, I was standing at the bar. Uh, the bar was, you know, bought me a drink. They were uh, lovely people, and I felt a hand on my shoulder. And I turned around, and there was two fellows here. And we were, howdy, howdy, Bob. I'm Gamble Rogers. This is my friend, Will McLean. Gamble came on, who, uh, who just won the hearts of the community, uh, not by just singing them songs, but by telling people stories. Gamble became, uh, the, you know, not only a hero for the community, because, you know, he made the ultimate sacrifice, giving up his life just in the hopes that he might save somebody drowning. I started recording. I bought this like little boom box that had a microphone on the outside of it and two tape decks, right? So I would record on uh, one thing, right? And then it was broken. So like, you know how you could do like a tape to tape, make a copy of something? I would play it, but the, it was broken. So the microphone would still be on. So instead of being just tape to tape, it was tape to tape plus the microphone being on, which was kind of perfect for me because then I would start overdubbing other guitar parts, but the um, one tape machine was slower than the other, so I had to retune my guitar every time. But then my mom bought me a four track, and then I got an eight track, and then I had two eight tracks that I put together. And Please remember this world you don't stop. Okay, now, Rachel, do you want to sing your part with Jim? Or should I find it? Because I can't find my video. Are you guys doing this? 
like a lower register. Might be good to do them separately. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah time, sure. I don't know. Especially if we're not, time, you're not time. sure of the exact part that you're well, going to do. Why don't we hang out in the control room and just listen while Amy does the octave part? The uh, we can start there and it'll probably be faster. Cool. Just get one done, you know. Okay, cool. Cool. okay. So, the same on the railroad. The only thing that isn't the same, it was all really good. Um, the only thing that wasn't the same was over silver screen sunset. Okay. And I really want you to hit that, lay into it a little okay. bit, you know, because that's that's because that's a really good. It could, it's almost as good to be a standalone melody, I think. Okay. Over silver screen sunset. You know, okay. give give it a little bit more there. Okay. Here we go. You know, I want to play it, and then I want to record it, and listen back, and add parts, and so I, I really started producing, um, you know, within the first year, even it was just my own stuff, you know, like twenty to one, something, yeah, like a limiter, and then just crank up the gain. Ooh, oh. Yeah, exactly. Put down the phone Look straight in my eyes Tear down the walls Let's jump off the grid Oh, I Let's take it again. Working together with, with Bill, uh, you know, somebody that I used to skip school and go hang out at Ace Audio at his old, at his old shop and just like look at speakers and like watch the, the band Black Mass rehearse. And, um, you know, I was just a kid and I just wanted to be a part of it. And Bill was doing it back then. So he's been somebody that I've just kind of looked up to forever. So for to be able to work, you know, side by side with him. I mean, by the end of two or three days, we're like, I mean, we didn't really know each other all that well, but now I feel like, like, I just want to hug him all the time. <laughs> and I love him. He's just such a, a wonderful man, just a sweet spirit. And all the musicians here have been just so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine doing like a tour, like the whole <laughs> local honey tour. And just play everywhere yeah. together. Yeah, it would be amazing. <clears throat> we could just play the album as it is with all the people that guessed it on other people's tracks. Yeah, and... well, it's like sounds great. Doing the tour as long as we can have a sort of patience every morning. Yeah. Sounds so good. <laughs> nice. Do, 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 do. Yeah, was that flat on those? Perfect. The stuff love is made of. <laughs> like I said, I've always been in bands of my own, my own creative thing, and always been pushing that, but always had the side of me that just like liked to play on a day-to-day -day basis. And even someone else's music is great because it gives me a chance to be creative on something that feel doesn't fully define me, so I can have more fun with it. <laughs> That's how we do Some percussion list. on my track. Heels in the air against the green. <laughs> What's um, up? Would you play that chorus just once more? Just a yeah, right where that little break in the vocals is. So that it's basically like the entrance to the chorus. First one. With nothing to say, hey, 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 there goes another day without punctuation. That was one more day without 
reason to cause mm -hmm. Did you use a hammer to tune it or are you just gonna ride it? it sounds, so good. sounds better now. I took it outside for like 60 seconds and it, it's it heated up. up. A Tighten that head up a little bit. You think that's humidity or what? I think it's the temperature. Absolutely the temperature. It was so weird. Like yesterday morning before I left, it was like they were like thud. I hit it and it was like just boom, boom. And I was like, oh no, they're, it's broken. It's broken somehow. I was freaking out. And I took it outside and put it on the front porch in the sun for like literally 45 seconds and it was like, it sounded perfect. That water it's, jar, I'd love the to temperature. use that too. Yeah, we can At do that too. Even in just Definitely. that section of the song. <laughs> Even just that, if that's like the only. That'd be cool. It'd be cool to keep this on spice. Like without, yeah, only select. The only thing I wanted to add just for the sake of adding it is Michael Jordan on the jar. This old wooden place. It's great. It's great to record in an all wooden room because it's organic material. My last little uh, recording room was drywall and it just kind of sucks. It's a little bit, uh, what's the word? Just not, it's not alive, you know? So it's cool to create and play a wooden instrument in a wooden room. <laughs> Three, four. Mm -hmm. If I come back, will you come to me? Sing soft and I can sleep. Catch all the bad and dreams and Tell me what I need to do. My mind creates fear. Oh no. Pick me up and let me down. Shut me up without a sound. Steal my life for sanity. She wrote the Bible just for me. I grew up hearing legends of this house. This is the homestead. My great-grandmother and my great-grandfather lived here, raised their family here, and eventually sold it in the 70s. My grandfather met my grandmother on this porch. Well, I am not the past that leaves behind me And I am not the words used to define me And I am not the dream that has awoke you And I am not the thoughts that stir and choke you But I am, I am I'm a passenger of life be it wrong or be it right in this body And I am, I am changing with every breath Until there's simply nothing left And then I'll do it all again I can't wait to do it again My friend It's just so special, especially because my grandma Judy and I were just so close and I look up to her so much. She is the kindest person I've ever met. And the same with Grandma Vela, you know, and I was really lucky. It's not just like, oh, it's my great grandparents. No, I know my family. I was able to be very close with Grandma Vela until she passed away and I was 18 at the time and I was right there with her when it happened. We all were. Grandma Vella, Grandpa Woody, them right before they got married. Oh my goodness. But that's my Grandma Judy. What a fox in that, her uh, plaid. That's not here, is it? Yeah, this, oh, that is that's here. here. That's, that's great. That's them, that's uh, my great uncles. 
my grandma, my great grandpa, Woody Tilton, my great grandma, Val Valentine Tilton. If you can see here, grandma, grandpa, my mother, our mom right there next to Amy and our older brother Marshall. That's me squished in there on the side. Vela's right beside me. And if anything, you know, my family, uh, they truly believe, and it's a part of us, is that families are forever. All right, here we go, from the top. Okay, one, two. The earliest memory I have of my dad, well, definitely would be my dad, but the earliest memory I have of him playing music is my mom sitting outside his bedroom door listening to him play and like singing along. Like he would never really play out in front of us. He always would go into his room and close his door and it was always amazing and it sounded so good. You know, he had the Travis pick down and he would move up and down the neck and my mom would just put her back against the wall and lean her head back and sing along. And I remember <laughs> sitting down beside her and just like trying to mimic her and do the same thing, you know. I couldn't remember what song it was, but I'd sit beside her and do the same thing. And I remember thinking that that was really special. That for me, music was a part of my childhood in a way where I always associate it with family and memories because my oldest memories of really enjoying music were on road trips with my mom and sister. Well, I had a Cuban grandfather that played flamenco guitar, and so that was my earliest exposure to uh, musicality. My father is a Floridian good old boy, so I grew up with uh, country music, you know, and it wasn't uncommon to see him chasing my mother around the house with a cheap Sears and Roebuck guitar playing bad Lefty Frizzell songs. So. That was kind of my exposure to music. I grew up in a uh, middle-class family, very, very normal family. I was the oldest, got a brother and sister, and my father was very old school, uh, New Jersey. You know, we were the we were from the old school. We were the blue collar workers. Um, the guitar was always the kind of um, the hobby. So for a long time, it was always, you know, what are you spending all your damn money on guitars and blah blah. I'm like. Well, I'm kind of good at it, I mean, at least a little, I, th I think so. Um, and then when I, I got involved with corporate America for a long time, I was uh, vice president of a security company for a long time. And, and when the recession hit and other things hit, you know, those companies closed their doors and I had to give all my toys back. And I was like, well, mom and dad were living in St. Augustine. I've got a lot of roots here from early 70s. Actually, mom and dad honeymooned in St. Augustine, 1964. And when I got back here, and it was great. My father was so excited to, to, that I was here, his boys here, blah, blah, blah. I'm the oldest. And, uh, and then he got sick. And so. So the thing that made me feel good was making other people feel good. And that's what got me through the last four years. <clears throat> so, but after 40 years, it took me 43 years to validate my music to him. <laughs> when he saw what I was making, I, I finally it became, that was my job. And that was like the best day of my life because he was like, holy shit, that's what you made today? I'm like, yeah. 
And he never called it playing. He goes, are you working today? Yeah, I am. I got a double. That's good. That's good. And that's what he called every day. Are you working today? Oh, yeah. And special thanks to Micah and Bill and, and Lou. Man. I know I work with you guys, brother. This, this guy's amazing. Uh, even me with my own song, it took me six guitar takes. He goes in and cuts the mandolin track in one take. <laughs> well, you heard it like 50 times by that, right? You ready to do it now? Mm -hmm. Death of my kid. Alright, song called For the Children. Mountaintop, I call across the valley the ancestors of a time when land was pure. I'm asking for their guidance to the secrets of a simple life when man worked from dawn till dusk and love was pure. What happened to the dreams we caught yesterday? And what will come for the children of tomorrow? It's just great to uh, see musicians working together as opposed to like, I know a lot of big cities and I've even known, you know, musicians who here and there are uh, a little more competitive about, about the thing, you know, and, and of course it takes all types no matter what, what you're doing. But, um, but there's definitely a good community in San Augustine. Camaraderie is good in town. I, 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 there's some good folks here. Good musicians and good-hearted people in town. Wonderful people here. Very few folks that I've come across, especially musicians and all that, I don't like, genuinely like. We all have our quirks. We're all high strung. You know, we're all crazy. But, but uh, you learn to live with that. Being, especially being a musician, you learn to live with each other's quirks and shortcomings because you, know, you share something special, you know. There's a lot of people, I've met a lot of really good musicians here and become pretty good friends with a lot of them. I, I think it's a pretty tight-knit community. I mean, I'm sure everybody doesn't get along all that great, but for the most part, it looks like it to me. Uh, but there's just, like I said, there's just so many. There's a lot of talent in this town. Not just in music, I mean in art. There was something, something very uh, magical about the music scene here, even back then, and uh, it's it's only seemed to have grown exponentially since then. So I've been coming here all my life ever since I can remember. You know, my parents used to bring me over here as a little kid, and once I got into the music scene, and uh, especially the acoustic music scene here, it's just. I don't know any place like it. I really don't. I was approached, I think, by Larry Mangum or, or um, Ray. I think maybe it was Ray, the guy that used to manage Chelsea back in the day in, in Jacksonville, and uh, about doing a gig at the, the in the round at the European Street. And so that's actually where I met Chelsea for the first time, and that was pretty cool. We did an in the round together, and we're playing our tunes and. Randy Judy did it with us, which was, it was pretty wild. It was pretty cool. And um, we, Chelsea and I realized just how, you know, similar our tastes were musically and just uh, pretty much hit it off that night. And she started coming down to St. Augustine and, and playing more and more. And of course, once St. Augustine got a hold of her, you know, it was, uh, they didn't let her go because she's a good one.
Yeah, I feel like a Muppet. <laughs> Jim Henson posing with my Muppet, Colton. <laughs> Say something, Colton. Something. <laughs> Sorry, I'll leave you alone. That's good to have a uh, yeah. distraction. Break it up a bit. Yeah. Sounds freaking amazing. Word, thanks. Alright, let me get it. Church, cause I'd been found. But you didn't see me come around. I laid my head onto the ground. And all my green turned to brown. This was so magical. And Magic is, is neat because, magic's a perfect word to describe it, because what makes magic magic is the unseen, always. Oh, that's magic. And when people describe an event as magic, it's because it's the feeling, it's the unseen. And this truly was magic in that sense of, I mean, not just the setting, but the feeling and the camaraderie and the softness of everything. It was like magic. It's like these artists that I'm lucky to be here with, so many times, Amy Hendrickson and Chelsea Sadler, various other people, Michael Jordan, like on a moment's notice, will bring, would bring me a PA. I didn't have a car. I didn't have my own gear. So I, it was limited. I could only play certain venues, which basically had everything for me. So, but these, like, I was rescued countless times by other artists in this town who were just like, yeah, this guy wants to play. Let's have him play, you know, that's really cool. And I was really blown away how well everyone played on everyone else's music. It's like we really found a way to, to do it, you know what I mean? And it can be a train wreck, like, lots of great artists, you know, have worked together on each other's song and it doesn't work. And all these songs really worked. So it's pretty cool. One of the things I'm most excited about though is that I do believe firmly that the element of magic this week will be captured in the album. It's going to be one of the best albums I've ever heard. This whole, this week has felt a lot like more, there's a, there was a little part of me when I was looking through the schedule and I was like, gosh, I hope I get to play another people's songs. And then I was like, that, I got to do backup vocals at least once every day of the week. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and just gave me a little bit of validation. because. And then I got to play bass on Chelsea's track too, which is a complete honor. And that was really cool. So that's something, even a year ago, I would have never thought I'd get to actually play an instrument on somebody's music or that they would even ask me. It's really cool. So this whole group of people is really nurturing and I'm really, really grateful for that. It's amazing. You know, I mean, we can even do that now. Like, local park. we could play the whole thing. What do you and tell me, like, particular? Just here, go around, and then here, yeah, just something. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And then yeah. we can work it out and try to, in 20 minutes, maybe we can play the whole thing all the way through, and I'll know when to come in and when not to come in. Because I want to cool. yeah, sure. know when to do that. Yeah. I mean, I'll sit here and go the whole song, but I think it needs to have yeah. prioritized, you know? Yeah, I'm just making up some words while I'm going. Try practicing using words. Let's not lie to ourselves, but we trust 
no one else what you know i do too wait it out wait until we arrive where we've gone and this nonsensy song skips a beat of your heart tripping lines tripping start get in touch with your mind breathing deep keep in mind But the camaraderie in this town, I mean, it's great. I mean, whenever there's been like a, you know, a tragic incident or, or, or something like this where you need to, it, you see how fast people come together. And I've, I've seen that a lot of times in this town, in this community. I've done many, many benefit shows for, you know, instances and people just really seem to pull together when times are hard. And I think what better way to, you know, uh, to present to present that and to, to, to make, take your mind off of what happened that was maybe negative with music, you know? One of the things I think that is such a, such a wonderful aspect of the musical community in St. Augustine is how welcoming all the members are. There's very little competition and quite to the contrary, there's a great deal of support that's given when people need something. I have uh, always been amazed and tried to participate in any time that there was a benefit. Somebody got into some kind of difficulty, a health concern, or maybe it was financial difficulty, everyone would band together and there would be an event and oftentimes we would make a CD in support of that where the proceeds could go to that. Um, uh, as you probably know, for 12 years I did a, a Christmas in St. Augustine series and we donated all of our time, as did all of the performers and the songwriters. And we gave 100% of our proceeds to the Empty Stocking Fund. And people would, would write songs for the project. They would just come out and, and give us all kinds of support. Um, I was actually in a, in a bad car accident uh, in 2005. And um, I'm lucky to be alive and broke a lot of bones and some vertebrae and some ribs and um and could not play guitar for three months and janet leonard sent me my pay for three months while i was recuperating from my car accident what club owner pays a sub musician and still pays their musician and i saw her i said janet you don't have to do that she said i don't have to do anything we miss you, and as soon as you can come back, we can't wait, so. Just seems to be a very inclusive scene that grabs you and just whirls you around this town of awesome musicians and enthusiasts, not even the musicians, the people who run the bars, who book the gigs. There's a, a genuine passion for the music around town in them, and it's a very vital part to the scene, I feel. There's only some eyes to the sky, I like I the planet to myself, so I'll stick around a while And I know that I won't see them again, but I can wish on it It's possible I've never met a moment so vast I could inspire such despair and bring a peace that lasts My own disguise so clever, my dear, it just confused me And I should have stayed there, I should have stayed forever And I should have worked harder, and I should have been better But I didn't, and I wasn't There's so many risks. Well, I mean, I guess financial would be a risk. Like if you go on tour, you kind of go all in. Um, but really it's more emotional. It's, it's the, you know, and uh, the mocking. And I have people walk by a gig that I'm playing and go, la, 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 la. And, I think people immediately see a girl with a guitar and they assume that I'm not going to be good. And people yell, like people say 
mean things as they're walking by courtyards that I'm playing in for no reason. You have to have courage and strength and determination and dedication and discipline to put yourself out there every day. As a, a wonderful little Carmelite nun named Sister Wendy Beckett once said, to be an artist is to be naked. You know, it's to, to be completely exposed and vulnerable and put yourself out there for everyone to look at, to take a little piece of, like Dylan said so expertly, uh, Businessmen drink my wine, plowmen dig my earth, and none will love along the line to know what any of it's worth, right? To know the types of sacrifices that are required to do that. You know, but, you know, I still work late a lot. I, I perform, not only perform late, but I also teach music, so I'm gone a lot. So, you know, it's, it's all about, if you're trying to do the family thing, you gotta, you have to prioritize these people in your world more than anything, you know? Um, art is great, but if you don't have people there um, who are supporting what you do, or if you're sacrificing it to the point where you're hurting your loved ones, then you're kind of missing the point, you know? You know, living hand to mouth, it becomes even more uh, apparent because if business is slow, the rent doesn't stop, the electric bill doesn't stop, the internet doesn't stop, and all of the, you know, the various uh, pay for, you know, the people who teach and who uh, work the counter and, and do stuff like that, and that doesn't stop, so sales do stop, then you go negative in a hurry because it's uh, it's not a large, not a huge large market. Um, and uh, and I took over Grandpa's when the original Grandpa passed away as more of a labor of love for St. Augustine for them to have you know a place like Grandpa's to keep coming to. Uh, the risks seem to change as. Uh as I grew as a musician or artist in the town, uh, where in the beginning it was more of stage fright of, what if nobody likes me? Or, or what if I mess up really bad and like I can't come back from it? There was like one person uh, who hasn't seen me before and loved it or who's just there to support me and like has genuine feedback. Like that human interaction that comes afterwards is worth the risk of five people there saying you suck or your voice is terrible. Like that, that doesn't hurt. That's whatever that happens. That'll bounce off. You know what you sound like. But that one person is like, I'd really love to read the words to that song one day. Or, I really liked uh, this concept you explored. What did this mean? Or even just, great job, man, here's a beer. Like, just that. <laughs> that interaction seems worth the risk of failing. And I feel like that's the reward. Music is the one thing that, like, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not like, oh, God, I gotta go to work. No. 
no. Like I wake up and I'm like, yes, what am I gonna play today, you know? What song am I gonna work on today? What opportunity am I gonna get to play with someone else today? You know, the simple things is uh, what make the biggest difference, you know? And we're just three guys that play some simple songs, you know, but the difference is, is that we're, we're, our energy is there to, to make a, a change in someone's life. You know, hopefully they laugh, hopefully they smile, um, dance around, you know, hug, hug somebody, you know, and uh, that's why we call it Love Chunk, you know. Everybody has something that they can love about themselves. I'm probably, uh, you know, 10 pounds overweight, you know what I mean? But I love it, you know, because I, <laughs> I have this chance to live, you know, it's, it's my weight. I want to carry it around with me until I'm tired of it. And when I'm tired of it, I'll, I'll start you, running so, again, yeah. you know. Music, I think God gave us music to take the sting out of our lives. And so, like, if you're blessed with being able to deliver that message and take the sting out of other people's lives, that's its own reward. Every time I get paid to play, I feel like I should be riding out of there, shooting under my horse's neck, you know, hauling ass, escaping. You know, I can't believe they pay me to play. The reward is that, um, Basically, at some point, you become the person you had projected yourself to be, an artist. You know, and that's, that's to me, that was the whole goal. Uh, just to, to have everybody has this way that we commandeer language that's uniquely our own. Uh, and to be able to, to fuse that with music and to make a singular statement with it is all I ever wanted to do. St. Augustine has given me the support system and the opportunities to excel and to, I don't know, they've accepted me. Like I was in the Florida Folk Festival this year and like I'm not exactly the most folky musician. I'm doing some really off the wall stuff sometimes and they let me in. That's awesome, you know? They had me there. I think it's just, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, like, I, I was thinking about, like, Scott's song that he wrote um, about being a musician, you know, a local musician, and just about the idea that it's not really about making it big, per se, it's just about doing what you want to do, you know, and making a living doing it. So, I think that's a reward, just being able to kind of do what you want to do and get paid to do it, you know. I would busk. I love to busk, actually. It's like one of the most zen things that I can do as a musician. It gives me the opportunity to so totally, I don't have to play a song. I don't have to play anything because I'm not, I'm not playing for anyone. I'm playing for the people that are walking by. I'm playing for me and I'm playing for the moment and I'm playing for what you present to me. When you stop to look, listen to me, I look at your eyes and that's, busking is like a study in fearlessness for me. You know I say I've been here before
and I say I I've been here before so many times And if I could find one for me Behind my mind's eye But we made the same mistakes over and over again Keeps me going. Uh, first of all, I've had an, an, an extraordinary life. My experiences are, uh, I think, I think I have enough fuel to carry on. And I think the thing that keeps me going is the possibility that Morris could still come. The practical answer to that is, if I don't play, my family doesn't eat. That's a big part of what I do. I know that might sound silly. No, it doesn't sound silly at all. It's at some point. Um, I mean, I'm a professional musician. I get paid to play music, and I take that money, and I provide for my family. Um, but from an artistic standpoint, I feel like I have so much more to say. I don't feel like I've gotten to where I want to be as an artist. Oh, uh, really, a lot of different things. I have a family now and uh, a wonderful wife that has uh, shown me support that I've never had before. And uh, my drive is my children. Uh, they're so sweet and I just love my, my little family so much. And it's such a, a blessing to be able to, to work hard and stay busy what I love to do, make music, sing, write, play guitar, record, play with my recording toys and with all my best friends around me and making new friends and, and inspiring people and being inspired by others and teaching and, and being teachable. That's what keeps me going. With me, I never want to think my best material is behind me and I always want to think this is the best time of my life. It's that simple, you know. I've been married to the same person for 36 years and we still, in the midst of finishing each other's sentences, surprise each other. So it's all, it's just, it's always uh, something better, something you haven't done, and that's it. Yeah, I just decided that uh, that's what I do, you know. That's what I, that's just what I do and I'm gonna do it. And as long as I can get people to listen to it, and even if they don't, I'm still gonna do it, you know. So, that's what keeps me going. I've tried quitting. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, it's like being an ex-Marine. <laughs> that's not, that didn't work, work out well. <laughs> no, because if, if it's what you do and, it, and you stop doing it, you're not going to feel very good. There, there's just something missing, yeah. There's something yeah, missing. There's a, yeah, yeah, you've lost yeah. an appendage. If I had to explain what keeps me playing music, it would be hard to say anything other than that I have to. It's like, it's how I deal with things. I don't want to get emotional or anything, but it, it's my, it's the best way that I've found for myself to get the stress out, to like vent myself, is to write it down and try to make it pretty. Or if I like it, if I can say it poignantly, and, if, and with even in some eerie melody, if it's something that's bothering me or whatever the case is, then it, it's like it leaves you. The whole, that the fact that life is here to be lived, I'm definitely a big proponent of that, you know, and so you want to do something that makes you happy. And of course, that's like the, the main thing, but, but obviously it's great to create. It's great to, uh, to find camaraderie in music. It's a, it's a universal language, you know, that, that everybody can, can, uh, share in regardless of race, color, creed or whatever and and it's uh you know it's close to godliness for lack of a better word I think. I love working with my hands. 
um, either playing or, or fixing instruments or building instruments from scratch. Because a lot of people go, well, do you buy like kits that are almost already made and stuff like that? And I go, no, we basically attack the tree and take it from there, you know, for the most part. Um, but to, to take just a piece of wood and then manipulate it so that it sounds good and plays good and is pleasing to people's ears, that's uh, one of the most wonderful things that you can do. Um, you know, everybody goes, oh, it's so beautiful. I go, Dot, God did the beauty part. I just bent it around, you know, <laughs> and tuned it with my ears. So um, I get to be involved in all of that. So that, that's, that keeps me going. Mm. I love it. I don't think there's anything better than stepping back and looking at a moment happen. I know that you had a hand in creating that magic. You, you, the music thing always keeps you young. It really does. Music is something that yes. you, you just never age. What keeps me going? Joy. You know, like when I die, they're going to have to take me to a plastic surgeon and remove my gram because I had a good time. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. Who wander by lone sea breakers and sit by desolate streams. World losers and world forsakers on whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers for the world forever, it seems. And whose wonderful deathless ditties have built up the world's great cities, and who out of a fabulous story can fashion an empire's glory. For one man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown, yet three with a new song's measure can trample an empire down. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 there's more, there's more. And we, in the ages lying, buried deep in the past of the earth, we built Neviath with our singing, and we built Babel itself with our mirth. And we overthrew them prophesying to the old of the new world's worth, for each age but a dream that is dying, and one that is coming to birth. The end. I love you guys. Have fun. The cameras turn off at midnight. The, it's a jam. There's beer. Welcome home. Okay. I am a music man. I've been one all my life. Been all around the country. And it's been quite the life. I played in D.C. and the ice house on the coast Drove from Canada to Key West in a weekend, it ain't no boast But my dear St. Augustine is where I make my home Just an old blue-collar music man waiting on a ringing phone Yeah, you don't make much money you ain't a big time star And us blue collar music folks Don't always have a car You spend almost every day Just looking for a gig I just enjoy my music life And not about making it big But my Miss St. Augustine Is where I make my home Just an old blue Column music man waiting on a ring and phone.
two in restaurants or bars But the little bit of money You know it don't go far You can't buy much groceries If you want to pay the lights Don't mention gasoline Don't mention it, that's right But my dear St. Augustine Is where I make my home Just an old blue-collar music man Waiting on a ringing phone My dear St. Augustine Is where I make my home Just an old blue-collar music man Waiting on a ringing phone Just an old blue-collar music man Waiting on a ringing phone See, well, the things you do when you do to me 